again, closed 53 deals in the first year, was on track to do 100 deals in the second year. I've always been a big believer in agents getting paid a full fee. So seek first to understand before being understood. It's not a sin to lose business. It's a sin to take a long time losing business. Agreed. And I am Greg Boyson, host of Inside Personal Growth, and it gives me a great pleasure to introduce to you one of our sponsors today, uh, Thais Gibson from the Personal Development School. Now, your personal attachment style is one of the most powerful forces in your life. It shapes your relationship, your self-worth, and your beliefs. What if you had the power to become securely attached? you'd be able to build stronger connections and heal any relationship. Attachment expert, Thais Skipson from the Personal Development School has pioneered a transformative practical approach that will change your relationships forever. The first step, discovering your own attachment style. The free attachment style quiz at the Personal Development School you can take it in less than five minutes and you'll get a personalized report with insights about your patterns, your beliefs, and the next steps to make real change. Don't miss out. Check the show notes below for the link and start your journey today. Welcome back to Inside Personal Growth. This is Greg Voison, the host of Inside Personal Growth. And joining us from Los Angeles is author Steve Scholl. You can see from him and behind him all of the books that he's authored. But we're going to be talking about, and you can hold it up, Steve, his book, the full fee agent. Now, this book applies not only to people that are in real estate. Uh, most importantly, I think it would be for anyone who wants to increase their confidence and get their full fee and not always discount everything that they're doing. Uh, but importantly, this book and all of other, Steve's other books, which are in his manual, manual, manual behind him, uh, we'll put links to those book as, books as well. Um, and I'm going to let our listeners know a little bit about you because this is, there they are. Uh, this show is all about personal and professional growth. And that's what you've been about all of your life, uh, Steve. And I think that that's important. And, uh, we, you know, Steve's kind of got an interesting background. Uh, he was a former NFL player turned real estate coach, speaker, and author. Uh, he's dedicated his career to helping real estate professionals, in particular, achieve unparalleled success through clarity, discipline, and accountability. Uh, today, as we said, we're going to be diving into this latest book called The Full Fee a Agent. Um, this book, it's a guide that challenges the status quo, right? And it empowers agents to stand firm on their value. And I think that applies to so many people who sell. Um, how do you stand firm on your value, the value that you bring and you offer? It doesn't matter what you sell. Steve's no-nonsense approach and proven strategies have transformed the careers of countless real estate professionals um, by helping them maximize their earnings while maintaining integrity and professionalism. So for all of my listeners out there, get ready. We're going to have a great a uh, fun-filled show here today, and Steve is going to uh, kick this off. So, Steve, if you would, uh, tell us, how did you, you've had prior books to this one, and you've had this big career, or you had a career in football. How did you get to writing these books, becoming a real estate coach, real estate coach, executive um, coach, and what kind of drove what I call the major shifts through your past experience that kind of approached you to becoming a great coach for real estate people? Well, uh, that's a mouthful. There you go. <laughs> well, I, I grew up in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. And as a kid, 
you know, played football, baseball, basketball, sports was my life. Uh, I was very, very focused. My mom was always trying to get me to do other things and be more diversified in life. And I was kind of on a one, one track and, uh, ended up going to the college of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia on a, a football scholarship. And, uh, upon graduation, uh, was invited to the Miami dolphin training camp as a free agent. I wasn't drafted. I was a walk on and they bring 90 people in the camp every year. And this was way back when this was 1980 and out of the 90 people they bring in the training camp, they keep 45. And I was lucky enough to make that final cut. Uh, I played four years in the NFL uh, before a knee injury and in my career. I got to play in Super Bowl 17 against the Washington Redskins. Unfortunately, we lost that day. Um, however, I was one of the tri captains uh, for the Dolphins in that game. And uh, so after my knee injury, went back, got my MBA at the University of Miami. Then I spent five years on Wall Street. And then in um, 1991, I just changed my entire life, moved from East Coast to the West Coast. I got introduced to residential real estate and jumped in in 1991. And in my first year in business with a partner, we closed 53 sales. Um, to put that in perspective, the average agent uh, closes four deals a year. So we, we had a, a great first year in real estate. People were buying. <laughs> if you were buying and you were selling, Hey, that question though, you were running Mike Ferry's operation, right? For a while. Um, yeah, it was. So what happened was I was going to Mike Ferry seminars. Um, what actually got me into real estate is I listened to an interview that Mike did with two agents in Long Beach, California, Kim and Daryl Rouse. And in listening to that interview, I got what real estate was. It's a progression. Contacts equal leads, leads equal appointments, appointments equal listings, listings equal sales. And that made perfect sense to me. And so jumped in, uh, again, closed 53 deals in the first year, was on track to do 100 deals in the second year. And I went to Mike and I said, Mike, what I, what I did with my partner who had been in real estate, I think I can do with other agents. And, and Mike liked the idea. And that was really the birth of real estate coaching. So I joined the Mike Ferry organization in 1993. Before then, trainers like Mike were doing programs. However, coaching did not exist. And right. so we, we introduced coaching in the real estate world in 1993. Uh, I stayed with Mike till 96. I went out on my own, opened my own company, Performance Coaching. And so I've been now coaching 32 years. In 2007, uh, myself and two other partners opened up a brokerage here in Southern California called Telus Properties, which ultimately sold to Douglas Elliman. So I've been involved one way or another in real estate as an agent, as a coach, as a consultant, as a broker, you know, a brokerage owner. I've worn many hats in this industry. For at least 25 years, it sounds like. So your, your website is performancecoaching.com, and I want to encourage all of our listeners to go there. Actually, on December 3rd, he is going to be doing a live event called the Game Plan 2025 Vision, Strategy, and Focus for a Winning Year. Uh, you can learn more about that by clicking on his link. I would assume you still have tickets available to for people that are in the L.A., Orange County, San Diego. Yeah, we have tickets uh, for people who want to attend live, and then anyone, uh, we also make it available via live stream. So if you can't be here in person, you don't have to miss out on the event. Well, it's a great opportunity for people. Now, let me ask you this. The genesis of kind of coaching, you 
credited with the kind of being pioneer in this thing, which you were in the 90s when you look at it. What really inspired you to create your own in, in, in entity entirety and kind of this this category? How did you and Mike or you by yourself kind of determine that this was a missing factor for people? There's all kinds of sales training. People could have gone to Dale Carnegie. They can go to Sandler. They can go wherever they want to go. Uh, but you actually carved out a niche with Mike in the real estate industry and then on your own subsequently. Um, what is it that's different, uh, Steve, that you see about potentially selling real estate versus selling other products or going to one of the other name brand companies that does sales training? Uh, in my whole life, I've always been fascinated by you know, what makes people successful. And I, you know, I pushed myself as a young kid. I was captain of almost every team and almost every team I was on and, you know, always wanting to be a leader and, you know, and always challenging myself to get better. And then when I got into real estate, you know, given my experience with the Dolphins playing for Don Shula, who's still the winningest coach in NFL history, uh, I, I saw an opportunity in real estate because in real estate, nobody has a coach or, you know, back then nobody had a coach. There were sales managers. However, it's an industry where everyone's an independent contractor and everyone's doing their own thing. And that's just not a formula for success. And, you know, everything that I learned on the football field in terms of the right type of habits, you know, whether it's getting in shape, whether it's, you know, being in the weight room, whether it's being in the film room, you know, it, it's always about being, you know, doing everything you can to get better so that when you're on the field, you don't have to think and you can perform at your highest level. So. What inspired me to think about real estate coaching was what I went through as an athlete. As a football, where as an athlete, the training, subsequent training. And, and I'd also add, I'd also add, not sorry to cut you off, you know, as a player, I, I always had coaches. You know, I, I had coaches, you know, starting at, you know, probably five or six years old in, in Little League when I, whenever, whenever I started that. And I was always very coachable. I, 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 I can't ever look back at a time where I didn't do what my coach told me to do. And I benefited greatly from coaching. I had coaches who took a great interest in me. My high school coach, he, he enabled me to get a, a college scholarship because he put my film out you know, into that universe so I could do something. I had great college coaches. I played for Don Shula, Bill Arnsbarger. So coaching was something that was, you know, had been very, a big part of my life and a very valued part of my life. Well, one of the things that goes along with that is, you know, look, when you're coaching, you call this performance coaching. Um, it is the performance, but it's also, uh, and I've had authors on here and I'm trying to remember the gentleman's name, but, um, it's about the management of our energy, right? Whether you're playing, uh, a f you're playing in on the field uh, as a football player or basketball or baseball, but the same thing for a real estate agent. It's about really how we manage our energy during the day. Now, in your book, the full uh, fee agent philosophy, you emphasize the importance of being a full fee agent. Um, and we know lately with technology, uh, there's been some interference here with all kinds of digital technology to interfere with the agent's uh, actual full commission. Uh, discounted commissions are all over the place. Can you explain what this means and why it's critical for still real estate professionals to kind of stand strong because of the value they bring? And I know in our pre-interview, we discussed it. You know, when you go out to get a listing or you go out to uh, work with a, a client, 
uh, they have to understand the value of what you bring. Speak with us about the value and the full fee agent. Yeah. I've always been a big believer in agents getting paid a full fee. In fact, I take a very hard line around it. And in about nine years ago, I read a book called Never Split the Difference. And the author is Chris Voss. And Chris was the lead FBI international hostage negotiator for seven years. And he was in the hostage negotiation business a lot longer. And in this book, he talked about, you know, what he learned as a hostage negotiator and how those principles apply to business. Mm -hmm. When I read the book, you know, I, I saw, wow, everything that he talked about applied to real estate. And so I reached out to Chris and we've been working together ever since. And two years ago, we, we, we put out the book, The Full Fee Agent. And as a hostage negotiator, Chris created a methodology that he calls tactical empathy. And this is something they found very effective in the hostage taking world or the hostage negotiation world. And think about, think about the job of a hostage negotiator. What are you selling? What you're selling is jail time. You know, someone goes out and robs a bank and holds someone hostage. And what you've got to sell them on is going to jail. That's what I would call a tough sale. Mm -hmm. And, and in the hostage negotiation world, they are successful 93% of the time, 7% of the time, all that, uh, hostage taker wants to do is die by police, suicide by police. You know, he's not there to negotiate anything. And. As a hostage negotiator, they had to learn to identify who were those people because it was going to be a very different course of action versus the ones that they could communicate with. And so from Chris and, and, and tactical empathy is the art of influencing others by articulating what they're thinking and feeling without necessarily agreeing, disagreeing, or sympathizing. Bottom line, tactical empathy is the ability to make people feel understood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is the missing piece in all of sales. If, if you take any sales training, they will talk to you about understanding what's going on in any one situation, whatever the industry is. However, once you understand what's going on, then you're trying to sell right into that need, whatever, whatever the problem is, there's a big step missing. And, you know, Stephen Covey said it in, uh, uh, seven the, habits, seven habits, you know, seek first to understand before being understood. And again, there's a step missing, understand, and then make someone feel understood because as human beings, it's universal. A, we all want to be accepted, and B, we all want to feel understood. Right. So, so in Never Split the Difference, Chris laid out this methodology for helping people feel understood. And it's a, a, a you know, it's, it, it's a process that's based on science of mind, how the mind actually operates. And so, you know, do you know, Steve, there's an old saying, people don't care how much you, no, until they know how much you care. Much you care, exactly. Right. So that I don't know if that was Zig Ziglar. I, I don't remember exactly. It could have been Zig Ziglar. But my point was, is that what you're saying is, you're talking about the caring part of it. You, you, anybody can articulate their message. Meaning, these are the reasons why you should list with X Y Z uh, real estate firm. What they can't articulate and understand is how to have this sense of compassion and caring for this understand person and articulate it so that they feel uh, comforted by it. Right. So right, the, that, that's the key. Right. The, 
someone cannot hear what you are saying until they feel understood until that point, all they want to do is get their point across. Right. And so again, this, this step, I, and I, I call it the missing piece in sales is this ability to make people feel understood. And the other big idea that, that Chris introduced that we've really run with since then is the idea of the favorite or the fool. And again, for any salesperson listening, you know, your whole career, you've been trained to believe that the way you get business is by your value proposition A, and then B, your ability to present that value proposition to someone else. So basically what you're doing is convincing and no one wants to be convinced. No one wants to have their arm twisted yet. This is what you've been taught and you've been taught in many ways and many different formats. And the fact is, and I'll use real estate as an example, however, it would, it would apply to any other industry. When a real estate agent gets the phone call, they all want, which is high. We're thinking about selling our home and we'd like you to come out to the house and talk to us about what that would look like. Every real estate agent gets excited because now they think there's an opportunity to do business with someone. What they don't realize, and again, this would apply to any industry. When you get that phone call, the person on the other end of the line already knows who they're going to work with or they're leaning strongly in a direction. So it's not about your presentation. It's not about convincing someone. Yes, you have a 20% chance or less when you're the fool in the game to get someone to do business with you. However, when you're the favorite, your chances of getting business are 80% or higher. And so what we've done in real estate is Instead of going on a listing appointment, you know, the agent gets that phone call, then they're going to spend two or three hours preparing for the appointment. They're going to drive out to the house. They're going to take a tour of the home. Then they're going to sit down in the living room and either give a formal presentation or an informal presentation. All of this is going to take about two hours or so. At the end of it, the seller's going to go, thank you. You've given us so much to think about. Let us get back to you. And the agent leaves the, the living room and they don't know whether they got the listing or didn't get the listing. And they're replaying the presentation in their mind. Oh, I should have said this. I didn't say that. Why did I do this? Then they're on pins and needles for 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours. Then they see the phone ring and it's that seller and their heart starts beating. Hello. Hi, Steve. It's, you know, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so. You really made, you made it really hard on us. It was a really difficult decision. However, we're going to, we're going to work with another agent. And your heart just drops to the floor. You can barely say thank you and hang up the phone. Well, we've changed that whole paradigm. When we get that phone call, either then or we're going to set up another 15 minute phone call or Zoom call. And in 15 minutes, we're going to find out whether we are the favorite or we're the fool in the game. And, and at because, what stage in the process does that occur, Steve? In right, other words, right, like, right at the beginning, right? If they call uh, me up, right, and they say, you know, we'd like you to come out, I'm going to say, um, Great. I'd love to do that. However, before we do that, if it's not impossible and we could do it now, if you have time or we can set an appointment, can we do a 15 minute call or zoom call? So I can find out a little bit more about what's going on. And that's your first filter right there. If you're the favorite, they're going to readily agree to do that phone call or zoom call. If you're the fool in the game, there's a high chance they're going to push back because they don't want to inconvenience themselves in any way. 
And so then there's a specific framework that we follow in that 15 minute call. And there's nothing magical about 15 minutes. It can be 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Point being, it's a short call. Bottom line, we're going to get to the truth. Am I the person they want to work with or not? And it's not, and I am not giving away anything that I do. I'm not giving any of my value away. I'm finding out what they're thinking and feeling. And we've been doing this now for close to nine years. And it is just, you know, an absolute game changer. One of the things Chris says, it's not a sin to lose business. It's a sin to take a long time losing business. Agreed. And Agreed. What we, and I, I think that's the, that's the role, Steve, that fear plays. You know, when people, it, whether they're a new agent or even an existing and a seasoned agent, um, they have a tendency to uh, be afraid of making that call. Correct. Right? And that's just human nature. Um, what is it that you can assure somebody that when they make that call and they ask those right questions, that they have an 80% likelihood of listing the property or getting being the selling agent versus um, them being blown away or blown out uh, from some other agent? Okay. This was another big shift. In, in my coaching practice and my own personal develop, development, um, reading a book by Michael Singer called The Untethered Soul. And Michael Singer has also written Living Untethered and The Surrender Experiment. And if you go on YouTube, he's got a, you know loads of podcasts. Oh, yeah, he's great. He's a big author. Right. Yeah. And what I got from Michael Singer is you know and, and, and we're programmed to believe this our whole life i was programmed i grew up in this paradigm most everyone grows up in the paradigm of believing that if we want something bad enough and we work something and we work hard enough then we're focused enough and disciplined enough we can make that thing happen and michael singer just blows that whole concept out of the water that's not the way the universe operates. What's happening in front of you right now has nothing to do with you. It's the result of billions of years of evolution. And if you don't believe that, just think about this. If I leave planet Earth today, right now, in this moment, what changes? Nothing. Okay? The universe existed for billions of years before me, and it's going to keep going after me. We, we have no ability to manifest things. Now, we're, we're taught, we're programmed the complete opposite. You know, set your goals, make your plans, work hard, be disciplined, and you can, you know, you can achieve anything you want. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Whatever is happening is happening. It's not personal, meaning it has nothing to do with you, and all of it is temporary. And so how does this fit into what? Well, that, that helps somebody with that philosophy shift the mindset that it isn't that important. And the reality is I'd rather get on to the next if I'm going to be refused this listing and go to the next one. Because look, if it's a fear of losing one, then you got to know that the next one's coming, right? So the reality would be, in in my estimation, the way I look at what you're saying and Peter Singer and the, and and what has been written is what you say is absolutely true, but it's a spiritual philosophy that people need to understand. Now, you could say it's scientific, but for the most part, having that mindset requires a complete shift to to bring on that mindset as a broker or an agent versus not bringing it on. And it means when you say we say personal growth here, we mean that you've got to dedicate time to understand not only what you might say is the scientific or rules, but really what's the spiritual laws here as well. I coach to six core building blocks. And number one on the list, the foundational piece 
is practicing mindfulness. If you don't get your head on straight, then nothing else matters. And the truth is, as human beings, are, we are hardwired for survival. We have our brain, you know, it, is, it leads us down this path of fear. And, you know, way back when the dinosaurs were real and we could get eaten by the dinosaurs. There are no more dinosaurs. All the dinosaurs are in here, inside our head. And again, the challenge almost every person has in life stems from this core belief that we're not good enough. Right. And right. until you understand who you are, and who you are is perfection. Who you are is an expression of infinite possibility. Who you are is one with life. That's who we actually are. That's our true essence. And until you embrace who you actually are, you know, fear is going to run your life. And so to your point, you've got to be working on yourself every day. The only thing we control in life, the only thing we control is what goes on inside of us. We have no control over the external world. Right. And so we have to understand as human beings what we control and what we don't control. And we don't control the result. We don't control the outcome. We don't control what's happening in life. What we do control is how we experience life and how we respond to life. That's what we control. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that you know, look, the the reality is whether you're in Eastern philosophy, Western philosophy, whether you're in, in whatever your spiritual path is, look, there's everybody is going to experience elements of pain, right? Whatever it might be, the loss of something, loss of a job, loss of money, whatever it is. And they've got pain over that. The question is, as you say, how do I relate to the suffering? I choose that suffering or I don't choose that suffering, right? So if you look at it as the experience that you're saying that we're going through, it gives you the ability to pick up and not be, uh, how do you want to call it? Uh, if you're advancing, you're always advancing. The reality is these are life lessons. And if you look at them as lessons, that's what they can be. And I can learn from them and I can grow from them. So you talk about building... Uh, you know, sustainable business and that many agents struggle to transition from what you call short-term wins to long-term sustainability. Um, what are the key elements of building a business that really lasts in your estimation? Good. Most agents, all they're doing is what I call chasing a deal. They're, they, they, they're, their focus is on where's the next deal coming from. As if, you know, that's going to change their life. And when you have that short-term focus, when all you're thinking about is where's my next paycheck coming from, you know, that's a very slippery slope that leads to nowhere. And again, going back to this idea, we're not in control of the outcome. What we do control is what we do every day. And there's a process to building a business. And over 32 years, I've reduced it down to six core building blocks, as I mentioned earlier. One being practicing mindfulness, two, optimizing time, three, cultivating relationship, four, implementing standards, five, mastering communication, and six, acting strategically. So the coaching we do with agents is on these six core building blocks. Because if you do these six things right and you do them consistently, then success will be a byproduct. And we're not in control of that. All we control, again, is what we do every day. And so what we're coaching agents on is the process, not the outcome. And it's a great way for people to be coached is to find a process because I think everybody looks for a, a plan, a standard way of operating 
that is optimal and produces the results that they're looking for. And the key is produces the results. But the key is if it doesn't produce the result that you believe enough in it to continue to use the same plan to move forward, right? So, you know, this world of ours, especially in real estate and any other sales uh, role in this world, has really morphed quite a bit. Um, the old days as we've known them are no longer. And so I have a question for you, kind of wrapping up this interview. You know, real estate, whether it's uh, it's residential or commercial, is still being sold by agents for the most part. Yet we are seeing these hybrid situations that are uh, forming out there. What do you see happening in trends in the future and that are shaping the real estate and what do you think agents today, if they come to your workshop and learn from you, should apply and think about? Because, you know, it's really about, Steve, putting the dots together. Where is this going and how am I ahead of the curve? And I think that most agents today probably want to be ahead of the curve, not behind it. Yeah. Real estate is interesting in many ways. If I look back to when I started in 1991, not a lot has changed, changed in this business. Now, technology has changed. How we get information has mm -hmm. changed. However, the business hasn't really changed at all. And, you know, there's been one company after another trying to get into real estate and provide a different cost structure that, you know, the, the discount model has been around forever. And the, the only company that has survived this from a discount point of view is Redfin. And I, I don't think Redfin would be considered a major player in the market. And the, the problem with the discount model is that people underestimate the cost of what it takes to run a real yeah. estate business. Right. And, you know, the companies have to earn a certain amount of money to be viable and the agents have to earn a certain amount of money to be viable. And if you're trying to keep reducing the splits down and down and down, you know, when it comes to buying a home, you know, you're not going to buy it online. You know, right. I, homes, you know, this idea that the home will sell itself, I haven't seen that happen in 32 years. And well, and, and what I mean by this is the amount of investment a real estate broker must make. Um, it doesn't matter wh which organization they're with uh, to promote the property, right? Whether it's on social media, whether it's videos, whether it's the, um, the flyers that they put out when people come through the open houses, sitting on the open houses, all of those things add to the cost of doing business. And, and they can be quite expensive, especially if you're going to hire a professional person to have a, a drone go over the property and, you know, have it, have put a little cool video together to do that. But that's really kind of the choice of the agent. And they have to choose, hey, is it worth that investment to sell this property? Am I going to do that? Right. And those are the changes that I think those are just some uh, of the changes that every broker needs to understand and needs to get aboard with because, hey, we are in an era where people are looking at Instagram, they're looking at Facebook, they're looking at places where they want to see uh, possibly the listing for that property or something else they've sold. Yeah? Yeah, it's, you know, when anyone looks at a real estate agent, it's not their fault. They think every agent is overpaid, you know, Everyone thinks they could do the job of their agent. They either just don't have the time or the inclination. There's no way for a buyer or a seller to truly understand what a real estate agent does. It's way more complex than it, than it looks from the outside looking in. And because you know, everyone thinks they could do it and do it better than their agent. They're always reaching in to their agent's pocket, like as if they're entitled to part of that fee. 
And again, there's a cost structure to the business. If I'm not getting paid a certain amount, I'm just working for free or I'm actually losing money. And this is why, you know, I take such a hard line about agents getting a full fee because that's what it takes to thrive in this business. You've got to be able to make a profit. And so the, the job, again, everyone thinks it's a lot more simple than it is. And the business of real estate is not complicated. The deals are. The deals are. And they're only getting more and more complicated with more and more rules and laws and regulations and everything. And, you know, it, it, realtors got to be part lawyer, part therapist, part salesperson, <laughs> landscaper, architect, mm. stager, you know, handyman, you name it. There's, there's a lot more to it than people truly understand. Well, the Full Fee Agent is a great book. You want to hold that up again? I think yep. this will give our listeners an opportunity. We'll put a link also to the December 3rd event. This particular book would be the one that you'd want to get. And Steve, I want to thank you for being on Inside Personal Growth, sharing some of your insights, your personal history, and the philosophy behind performance coaching. Also, for my listeners, just go to performancecoaching.com there. You can learn more about Steve, his coaching program. You can learn more about this event in L.A. on December 3rd. It's been a pleasure having you on, Steve, and spending a little bit of time with our listeners uh, speaking about, hey, keep your fees. Keep the full fee. Thanks so much. Thank you very Namaste. much for having me. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this podcast on Inside Personal Growth. We appreciate your support. And for more information about new podcasts, please go to InsidePersonalGrowth.com or any of your favorite channels to listen to our podcast. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.